Jack. Hey, Neil. It's that time again. Uh, yes, it is. I'm always excited when it's that time. <laughs> so I got something for you. It's It comes up all the time in science fiction, and I get asked about it. And you know what it is? It's wormholes. Oh, God, yes. Okay, because people, oh. we're, we're done with black holes. Time to move on. <laughs> exactly, right? And then, of course, there's all the people who think that perhaps the other side of a black hole is the wormhole, and I've heard that kind of stuff talked yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. So let me start off with just a quick story. I told the story before, but now it has a place to land perfectly. Ooh. All right. So some years back in the early days of Twitter, I was at an airport in, I think it was North Carolina's, Charlotte's, uh, Charlotte Airport. It's a huge airport. And I had to go from a big plane to a little plane. And okay. I had my luggage. I thought I'd be good and not have to check my luggage. But then I realized now I have to carry the unchecked luggage oh. <laughs> between two very widely separated points in the airport. So I'm there and I'm, I swear it was like miles. All right. So I get to the gate and I thought I'd be clever. And so I tweeted, can't wait until we have wormholes. In that way, all gates are adjacent to one another. Hmm. Okay, you just sort of step through a door. There's the yeah, other and gate. And there's the other gate. Boom. Everything's connected by. It. So I thought I was being clever, and then someone cleverer than me replies in my Twitter comment thread, "Dr. Tyson, the day we have wormholes, you won't need airports." <laughs> <laughs> like, whoa. That's true. Yeah. Whoa! I just got totally served on that one. Uh, so a wormhole, just so people can understand it, it's a. If you look at space. And time, we've learned ever since Einstein in 1916, when he advanced the general theory of relativity, which is the modern understanding of gravity. We learned that gravity is the curvature of space-time. Space-time, yeah. And what you do is when you are falling towards something, you are simply sliding along the fabric of your space-time towards whatever it was that you were saying is attracting you. And so it's an interesting, it's, it's a different construct from just action at a distance. You're there, I'm here, we have gravity, we pull each other, and that's it. It's a whole other thing going on. And if you think of space and time as fabric, right. then you can distort the fabric with the force of gravity. Captain, so I you, believe there's been a distortion in the space-time continuum. Exactly. Okay. So if you, if you ask yourself, can I distort it in interesting ways that might benefit what I want to do in the universe. So mm. for example, I can get you around among the planets using the rockets that we've got, and I can get you there before you die, all right? Uh, so <laughs> moving around the solar system takes days to the moon, months to Mars, years to the, to the outer planets, and decade, you know, maybe one or two decades to Pluto. If you okay. want to put that, keep that on your list. If you so, wanted to go to a non-planet. If you want to go to a non-planet, <laughs> Chuck is rubbing it in. I didn't rub that one in. Chuck did. I, I thought I was being charitable and even included it in my thing. And yes. Chuck's got to start the fight. And if you want to go to the uh, to the uh, the lost member of the Kuiper belt that shouldn't even be invited to the party. <laughs> yeah. You know, what are you going to do, right? <laughs> Some people still have not gotten over that, Chuck, so, so be sensitive to them. So what happens is, if you want to visit other stars, then every way we know to get there exceeds a human life expectancy. So you have to find a way to shorten that journey, knowing that the speed of light is not just a good idea, it's the law. Right. All right? There's a speed limit to how fast you can move in that fabric of space and time. The nearest star is four light years away. At the speed of light, you watch someone go at the speed of light, it'll take them four years. To do that, you say, okay, well, let's just do that then. But right. we're nowhere near the speed of light. All right? Right. This is, you know, so, so it's hopeless. And that's the nearest star. Nearest. So you imagine, let's, is there a way maybe you can poke a hole through or open up a hole in the fabric of space and time in a way that it's curved such that you can take a shortcut from one location to another. Nice. So imagine if you had a sheet that, and so compress everything to a sheet because otherwise it's hard to think of right. bending four dimensions. So, could, so our universe is now a sheet. 
So if I take that sheet, normally I'd have to travel the full length of the sheet to get from A to B, and I want to do that before the TV commercial, okay? And so what do you do? You warp the space and then open up a hole from one side to the other where the two places are close in this higher dimension. Right. And by doing so, you basically take this portal through, come out the other side, unfold the, the, paper, the page. And you've traveled all that distance in no time at all. It, it basically, and the no time part is, well, how, how much did you warp the space in order right. to do that? How, and if it, you warp it a lot, it can happen basically instantly, like walking through a doorway. Or if it's warped a little less, then it'll take you a little longer. But in all cases, your effective speed is way greater than the speed of light because you basically cheated and went, right. went across the other side. Now here I'm doing this with my hands and things, and you told me you solved that problem. You have warped space in your living room. I did, <laughs> and so a couple years ago, you did that explanation, not on camera, but we were just at the museum. Mm -hmm. And you took a piece of paper and you drew two dots on the paper, then you joined the two dots and you put a pencil through it and you were like, that's your wormhole travel. Mm -hmm. So I, with my new favorite thing in the world, it's called Glowforge. It's a 3D laser printer, which allows you to cut all kinds of things, which I actually made the fabric of space, that's the black side, right? And then just for demonstration, I made, you know, this other side, which is red. Wait, 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 you gave space a black side? I gave, that's right. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Finally, you making sure. <laughs> Finally, space has a black side, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and then for contrast, I painted this other side red. But here's the cool thing. I took your demonstration, mm -hmm. okay? So here's that sheet, okay? And then you bend this, mm -hmm. right? And then just, and now Ooh. what I have Ooh. is my wormhole, man. Check that out. And just like you said, if I warp space closer, then my time travel is diminished. But if I warp it less, I'm still traveling a shorter distance, but as you can see, it's a little longer. I'm so into this, Neil. I took video of it and everything. Oh, really? <laughs> I, I made video of this. It is the coolest thing I have. Now, I'm kind of a crafty person. Like, mm -hmm. I like painting and, like, sanding chairs and, paint. you know, like, I look at Etsy. I, I'm not going to lie, just to see what people are doing. But, like, I'm not so crafty that I would ever make anything for somebody. Mm -hmm. But I'm making everything for everybody. You will never get a gift from me that didn't come from a Glowforge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead serious. That is how cool this thing is. Okay, every single, every single striation, every single cut that you see here was mm -hmm. made by the 3D laser printer. The what you're saying, what you're implying is, since the damn thing can make wormholes out of the space-time continuum of the universe, yes, you can make any damn thing. You can <laughs> make. I am. I'm telling you, I am fascinated by this thing. I am in love with this thing. So anyway, that's the wormhole that you just talked about. Okay, that might be the only wormhole we get to have because Why? what I didn't tell you is. is that it's one thing to have a black hole that all space and time collapses on itself right? to a singularity, but what you now want is a hole through the fabric of space that remains open. And the configuration of matter and energy to create a hole is unstable against collapse. Oh no. So, so in other words, you can have a stable black hole there that's sucking in at, you know, and distorting the fabric of space and time, but a wormhole requires actively holding it up so that while you're in there, it doesn't collapse on you. Whereas you made one that's stable. See, we gotta learn the, the secret engineering of that. I, so basically people, what you're looking at right here is the only stable wormhole in the universe. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so what did you do? You clip on, it's a spiral shape. So you clipped it on together so it's, it hooks in and then you get, it's like a little accordion. So yeah, it's a spiral shape. Mm -hmm. And then all I did was, so 
the design, as you can see here, has a small hole in the middle mm -hmm. of the black hole. And then I just put a, a little peg in there. It actually cut a peg that I could put in there. This oh, it thing, did? Okay, yeah, wow. It actually okay. cut a peg that I could put in here. This thing so is the, amazing. So the thing is, a black hole, most understandings of a black hole have you dying if you fall in. If you can pry open a worm because you end up at the singularity, right? smushed and spaghettified and stretched and, and broken. But a, a, a wormhole, if it's opened and maintained, it could do one of several things. It could be a, a hole to another part of our own universe, which is what you've just done because you, you curved your universe and you're just going from one location to another. Or you can imagine wormholing out of our universe into another universe. So in that case, you'd have to print two of those and have two of their, their sort of coily um, hole structures intersect. And that way, people in one universe would go through that and show up in another universe. Now the cool part is if you break the wormhole and collapse it, then you left your universe never to return again. I'm on it. <laughs> I'll be right back. Wait, wait, wait. Are the bill collectors that close to your door? <laughs> Oh, how great. Believe it. I, I'm in so much debt. I'm sure there's bill collectors in the next dimension as well. They're like, we've been, we've been waiting for you, Chuck. <laughs> you say, I'm free. And a handcuffs go on. Exactly. Uh, uh, What's it called? Extradition, I guess. from one Extradition. Yeah. Interdimensional extradition. There oh, you go. Cool. Cool. Yeah. So, so wormholes are fascinating, and of course they show up in so many different movies, all right? Uh, in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, their, their time-traveling phone booth is basically a wormhole. Right. Oddly, in the movie Back to the Future, they're not, they don't appear to be traveling. They are, it is a wormhole, but you know, it's, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a portal rather than an actual extended wormhole. They just right. exit one time and enter, enter another, another. Right. And one flaw, but I'll give it to him because they did so much else right in uh, Back to the Future, is when they leave the parking lot and end up, this is Back to the Future 1, they uh, leave the park at 88 miles an hour. Right. And they show up in the cornfield, in the farm fields that would become that, that, um, uh, that uh, strip mall. What they didn't factor in is that between those two times, Earth would have moved in its orbit. Wow. So you can't only travel back in time. You right. have to also travel back in space if you want to land where you expect to land from where you left. So if he would have time traveled back and landed and in the vacuum of space and they all would have died and the movie would have lasted 15 minutes. Well, now, uh, yeah, nobody's seeing that, Neil. Nobody's going to see that movie. <laughs> so, so the point is, your wormhole, if it's going to go anywhere, you want to, it's got to go somewhere. Otherwise, it, it's not only in time, but in space. All right, you want to make sure that it, it works out that way. Um, so also, is that movie in uh, Time Bandits? That was a, um, that, what's that from the 80s? Uh, that one um, was the uh, Monty Python crew. Uh, so that one was wormholes in the movie Contact. Jodie Foster basically goes through a wormhole. And so, you know, it's kind of fun cinematically to display one of these, to portray them as you're going through, and it's basically like a tunnel. And, and you know, in a way, maybe the old TV show Time Tunnel was an earlier concept of a wormhole, although at that time, I don't think we had the term yet for it. Uh, so, yeah. by the way, one of the earliest uh, statements about the existence of wormholes was the idea that if a black hole absorbs everything that comes near it, mm -hmm. let's, let's take a look at the math surrounding the black hole, and you find out that there are two solutions to that equation that gives you the black hole. One of them absorbs everything, and one emits everything. Right. Okay, so something that emits everything at all times is a time-reversed black hole. So you can ask, hmm, where does everything go that enters a black hole? Maybe it's what's coming out on the other side, which we'll call a white hole. How would you connect them? You connect them with a wormhole, uh, right? So wormholes have very high utility. If you're trying to think about um, fun and interesting and, and useful uh, bendings of the fabrics of space and time. 
And you got a damn printer that'll make that every day. And I was going to say, you could do all that, or you could just get a Glowforge. <laughs> <laughs> if the next you could, you could do all that, or you could just go get a Glowforge, and you could make your own black hole and your so, own wormhole. Could you make one big enough so that you could go through it, and then you're gone? So, so if the next explainer video, I say, Chuck, right. Chuck, where's Where Chuck? Are... <laughs> gone fishing, you know. That, there you go. Yeah. So th- uh, I have to tell you, I'm looking forward to uh, figuring out. First of all, I think of everything now when I see stuff. I'm like, can I glowforge that? That honestly is my really? new. That's how that's what. Okay. That's how right. that's how cool this thing is. So I'm hoping that uh, we will have the opportunity to talk about more stuff. <laughs> Maybe we can that we can print. To sponsor this. Let's get them to sponsor this. Oh, that well, yeah, that without a doubt. I mean, let's do that. They they better. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> we'll get them to this part. <laughs> <laughs> Even yeah, I I have to say though, um, Glowforge, you saved my Christmas. <laughs> That's all I can say. If if you know me, you know what you're getting. <laughs> all right, uh, our first explainer video where Chuck now has toys. Yes, okay. All right, Chuck, we got to end it there. All right, all right. Uh, that, it's been fun talking about uh, wormholes. And and like I said, try to stay in this universe. We we have more work for you. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. I'm, I might become bi universal. That's all I can say. Bi universal. Yeah, man. <laughs> all right. Uh, this has been Star Talk, uh, an explainer video. I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson, your personal astrophysicist. Keep looking up. <laughs> <laughs>